Hi. Last night we finished a couple more of our motors and if you're interested in the process of building your own rocket motors, take a look at the previous video that we posted a couple of days ago on this project. Today we're going to go outside and we're going to test these motors. And one of the nice things about living in New England in December is that when you want to test large flammable devices, we have the advantage of about a foot of heavy wet snow covering just about every surface of our property. The downside is that Alex and I are going to have to go outside and we're going to have to film in about a foot of heavy wet snow. So that's going to be a bit of a treat. Before we get outside, what I'd like to do is just briefly give you an idea of what it means to describe the power of a rocket motor, the, the, basically the thrust that it's going to be able to produce. And for amateur rocket motors, there is an accepted letter code that is applied to each motor based on the total amount of impulse that the motor generates. In the first video, what we did is I went through the idea of what's called specific impulse, or the amount of power or punch that a particular fuel will generate. The total motor impulse is a product of how potent that fuel is and how much of that fuel you have. And there's a little bit of a correction factor based on just how effectively you've built your combustion chamber and you've designed your nozzle. And in the amateur community, the very smallest nozzles or very smallest engines start out with the A or alpha. And that represents a total motor impulse of two and a half newtons for one second, or about a half a pound for a second. As you move down the letter codes to B, C, D, E, each time you go down one letter code, you double the total impulse of the engine. So a B motor would have a maximum thrust or a maximum total impulse of five newtons for one second. A C motor, 10 newtons for one second. And this D motor, which I've got right here, represents 20 newtons for one second. Now it could burn fast. It could have a very fast regression rate and say burn in half a second and may make say 40 newtons of thrust, but only for half a second or burn much longer and produce maybe 10 newtons of thrust for two seconds. But it's the total product that's represented by the letter code. The second set of numbers there that you see is 12 represents the average thrust of the motor. And then it, that again relates to the regression rate, how fast that propellant inside the motor is burning. And because a rocket motor is not a square wave, it doesn't start at zero and go instantly to full thrust, maintain exactly that amount of thrust and then instantly drop to zero. It's more of a curve. This will give you a rough idea of how long the motor would burn. So with a 12 newton average thrust and about 20 newtons of maximum total impulse, this is probably going to burn for about a second and a half to get out all that power. The second number that you see there, the dash five, represents a delay charge. There's a small fuse or a small burning uh, component that once the booster has fired or once the engine has fired, will slowly move through an insulated piece of this plug in the far end and then hit a charge and discharge and essentially blow the end of the motor right off of the end of the, the far end away from the nozzle. This is what propels a parachute or recovery system to allow the, motor, the rocket to drift slowly back to earth. In some cases, you have no delay. There is no discharge at the far end. That is what's true of all of these engines here. And so the only way that we would characterize these engines at this point is just going to be the amount of fuel and the type of fuel. D engines are about the biggest engine that you can buy commonly at most hobby shops that will sell rockets. You can get online E and even F motors, depending on um, hazmat restrictions and where you're ordering them from, but that's about it. The smallest motor that we built is basically an F motor. This would be about the biggest motor you could conceivably purchase. And that represents 80 newtons for one second. So it's a pretty powerful motor. The larger motors that we built here are four times the size. And so instead of being an F motor, they're H motors. These are powerful motors with a total impulse of 320 newton seconds, or about 65 pounds for one second. So these are very potent motors. Now, if you look over here, where I have the hybrid motor, you don't even want to think about the letter code that applies to this thing. This is way beyond these other motors here. And so just to give you an idea of how, well, actually, 
I should said you shouldn't think about it, but now you're going to think about it. It's like saying don't think about a pink elephant, but we'll get into that in a future video. Now there are a couple of different ways that you can ignite or start a rocket engine. Today we're just going to be using some slow burning fuse and we're going to augment this fuse with some of the pyrotechnic flash powder that we uh, mixed up in our last video. So if you're interested in how we made this, take a look at the previous video. Now another alternative to igniting these is to use what's called an E-match or a bridge wire igniter. Effectively what these have is a very, very tiny piece of nichrome wire across these two conductors and when you put about an amp of current in here from a battery, this will briefly heat up to red heat and ignite a little glob of pyrotechnic mixture which can then be used to ignite a rocket into which you've inserted this. It's a convenient way to do it and a lot of higher power rocketry uh, uses this because you can have a very, very long standoff. Today we're just going to have fun. We're going to light the fuse and we're going to run like hell, so it should be a lot of fun. Lastly, how we're going to set this up is you'll see the apparatus once you get out there and it's pretty straightforward. You'll be able to figure out why and how we did that. But each of the motors is going to be mounted in a little bracket that retains it and allows it to be mounted to a beam that stands out of the back of our test rig. And there's a retaining plate here that keeps the motor compressed in here, but allows us to adjust for different length motors and different size holes allows us to adapt to different diameter motors so that we can test all of our different motors with the same setup. So that's pretty much it. Let's get outside and let's start some fires.
So if you're interested in the camera that we use, the Kronos 2.1 for this slow motion shoot, I did a review of it a few weeks ago going over the specifications, how to use it, some of the lenses that we got for it. So if you want to see anything about that, check out that video. And I want to say that if you're interested in these rocket engines, we're going to be doing more videos on this subject and we're going to be using this camera for a lot more high energy experiments in the future. So I want to thank you very much for watching. And if you're interested in this kind of material, please subscribe to the channel because we're trying to get to 500,000 by the end of this year. And it would really help us out if you did subscribe. In any case, I'll wish you a very happy new year. Stay safe and we'll see you soon.